schedule to our podcast. And thanks for being here today with us. Temperature sensors. I see them taped on the top of the battery every time. They don't I know. be a bit of good on the top of the battery. They got to be yeah, there's an air pocket. Of the battery. They, if you bolt them to the post, that's one thing. And they should be bolted to the negative post because that's the one that gets the most heat. But uh, positive post is okay. But if they're not bolted to the post, they've got to be at least halfway down the side of the battery because otherwise uh, they're not working because there's an air pocket in the top of the battery that acts as an insulator. And I see it over and over again on brand new boats. They, they've All got the time. sensors in the wrong place. Yeah, it's, you know, it's funny. We, we do the same thing. We do a service called an electrical audit. And this is where we get a lot of our knowledge, to be honest. It, you know, going on people's boats, the, the amount, your, my imagination is incapable of dreaming the things that I've seen on boats. <laughs> and the good news is, you know, collectively, we're learning a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, some of us, are paying the price and others are learning from those mistakes. I had a, I had a boat owner, you know, they, they swapped out again on temperature sensors. They swapped out the inverter for a different one. They reused the old temp sensor because it had a phone jack on it. And the old one was a phone jack. The new one needed a phone jack, but the, the, I guess the scale was completely off in terms of what their resistor was expecting to be reading. And uh, they literally killed their battery bank because their temperature sensor told them that they were on thermal runaway and their battery charger was basically practically not charging. Uh -huh. all the time. Yep. Yep. And uh, they lost their battery bank. And that battery bank was probably about five, six thousand uh, dollars yep. yep. for a temperature yep. sensor that had not been switched. Yeah. It's painful. Yeah, I got some uh, photographs of some. Uh, a big AGM bank, you know, these are $700 each, uh, where they're all melted down um, because the temperature sensor was on the top. And, yeah. and, they did go into, and they did go into thermal runaway. And the temperature sensor didn't know there was anything going on. I've seen, I've seen temperature sensors not even installed in the battery. I've seen them installed. They're more like ambient temperature sensors. Uh -huh. Yep. I've yeah. seen them installed. I saw a boat that had thermal runaway. Yeah. It was installed actually on a, the negative distribution. Oh, so talking about ambient temperatures, here's another one that I think is going to get us into trouble. Um, you know, we've been talking about high output alternators and we've been talking about lithium ion batteries. Well, you put those two together and those alternators are running really hard for extended periods of time. And even if they're 70% efficient, the uh, case temperature on the alternator is going to be well above 100 C. Uh, typically speaking, we'll set a temperature center of maybe 110 C maybe as high as 120 on the uh, integral system will actually go to 200 C. Uh, and I ran it to 200 C to, to see what would happen. Well, what, what yeah. happened was it, it uh, sent enough heat through the rotor to where it destroyed the belts. <laughs> the the was okay. But anyway, so we're, we're well above 100 C on the case. And then, uh, you know, you've got fans. Typically you've got one at each end blowing out the middle, but it may, may be sucking and blowing out the ends, but somewhere we've got all of that hot air coming out of the alternator. And if we have a fire suppression system in the engine compartment and it has a temperature sensor, that temperature sensor trigger is triggered at 79C. If that temperature sensor is in the path for the air coming off that alternator, you'll trigger the fire suppression system. That can't be And good. we're gonna see uh, more and more of that happening because we're gonna, uh, the heat off of these uh, powerful alternators is going to heat up these small engine compartments and then yeah. they're going to trigger the fire suppression system. And if it's a dry powder system, it will destroy the engine. Yeah, because the air intake. Yep. If, yeah. so, so the other thing we need to do, first of all, we need to move those sensors to where they're not anywhere near to the alternator. And secondly, we need to make sure that the boat owners are using uh, gas cylinders and not dry powder. Uh, and typically they like the dry powder because it's it's a bit cheaper, but it's oh, a, wow. a yeah, lot more expensive if it destroys the engine. <laughs> oh, that, um, that that would be a bad, honestly, you get out of boating after, there's not that many people that would stay in boating after that. No, well, I actually, I was on a brand new um, boat in, in England, came down the river from the boatyard, fresh out of the yard, lithium batteries, uh, high output alternator, uh, triggered the temperature sensor on, on the way down the river from the boat from the boat vehicle and destroyed the engine. Uh, so then they immediately had to haul it back out and put a new engine in it. Uh, yeah, that, and, that's uh, a bad thing. 
I told them what I thought was the problem, and they said, oh, that's not possible. It could, there's no way it could do that. So I, I'm hoping they moved that temperature sensor, or by now they may have done it again. <laughs> also, if you found this video interesting, please subscribe. Um, it honestly it does, it does help us to know that all this time that we're investing is actually we're reaching a lot of voters. And I want to thank all of you for watching. Thanks for spending some time with me.